May 22, 2013, at 10.55 a.m. Tuesday, 26-year-old Arunima Sinha became the first woman to conquer Mount Everest on a prosthetic leg. It was a moment of pride for the entire nation. The spirit, the mental strength and the willpower of Arunima have been exemplary. True to her name, which means the first rays of the sun, Arunima has defied all odds and will be and is a source of inspiration for millions throughout the world. Her courage and determination, her simple nature and her sweet smile endear her to all those who come in contact with her. She has even been termed a miracle. So let's meet Arunima and be motivated by her. Arunima, could you please enlighten us about yourself? I am Arunima Sena, as you just mentioned. I started participating in games very seriously from class 6 onwards. I was a very keen player in school. I played for nationals in volleyball and football. In fact, I have played seven nationals. After passing out from school, I joined college, completed my graduation and then post-graduation. I ended up doing law and then of course the race for a job began. In 2011, I qualified the written test for paramilitary forces and received an interview call. Actually, there was some discrepancy in my date of birth. The date of birth in the form and that in my birth certificate did not match. This demanded immediate attention and had to be rectified as soon as possible. So I started for Delhi. I boarded the train at Lucknow station. I had no reservation. Hence, I boarded a general compartment. On the train, there were some miscreants who tried to snatch the gold chain that I had around my neck. I resisted, because of which they threw me out of the running train. The time was almost 1 a.m. I tried to save myself and held on to the handles of the door. Half my body was inside the train and the other half was hanging out. I could have braced myself, but unfortunately, Another train was passing on the other track. I still remember distinctly that the only thing I could see was a bright light and the other thing I could hear was the loud whistle of the train. My mind had become numb. I saw the engine of the other train pass. Then I dashed against the passing train and fell down. I was still conscious. I realized that both the trains had gone away and I was lying on the tracks. This happened within seconds. At that point of time, I had no idea that my foot was almost cut off from my body. I tried to move my leg but it did not move. Then I lifted my leg and found that my leg had almost been severed from my body. Blood was flowing out forcefully. The other leg had also broken and bones were coming out from the flesh in four places. I was injured very badly. I wanted to cross the track but then I realized that it would be dangerous to do so. So, I decided to lie on the tracks on my stomach. The whole night, trains would pass and I could see the rotating wheels over the tracks. Tears fell from my eyes, but I could not even wipe them, as my arms were also fractured. After some time, my vision also became less. I could hardly see anything. The entire night, I lay on the track trying to save myself from the trains that went over the tracks and animals like rats that moved all over my body. <sighs> Initially, I could feel the movement of the rats over my body. They were running over me. Later, even that sensation was no more. And today, when I think about those moments, I shiver. Whenever I hear a train whistle, it is enough to make me shudder. It was only in the early hours of the day that some villagers spotted me and took me to the nearby district hospital at Bareilly. What kind of people did you encounter during those traumatic days? 
during those days i encountered many kinds of people there were people who i did not even know or with whom i had never interacted with people who i might never meet in life again who donated blood for me on the other hand there were people who criticized me and tore me to pieces saying that the accident was just a cover up for suicide that i tried to commit some said i was traveling ticketless and i jumped out of the running train to avoid embarrassment and punishment at that point of time when it seemed to me that everything was over to face this kind of condemnation even though i was a victim then there was a system to fight against how would a middle class disabled girl be able to fight the system how do you think i felt but instead of losing hope i gathered myself and faced all odds a true soldier is one who makes the impossible possible and you made sure you did that apart from treating me and nursing me each doctor of the hospital donated one unit blood for me i don't know whether it will be relevant here to mention that these doctors were so supportive that when they put before me the fact that they would have to amputate my foot without anesthesia i agreed of course there was no other option as there was no facility that is required for administering anesthesia available in a small hospital there are people who are negative and people who are positive this incident has made me aware of both kinds the doctors at the hospital in bareilly were very positive in fact if i am here sitting and talking to you it is only because of their effort it was actually a combination of their efforts your confidence inner strength and will power that you are here today uh you see in life you can achieve anything if you have the will and confidence by then i had understood that i had been saved for a specific purpose which would be really grand i took it positively i said yes me rather than why me i feel disability is all in the mind if your thinking is negative you are disabled if your thinking is positive even if you are physically disabled you are no less than an able bodied person struggles are a path to victory if you look into history the more difficult a struggle the more magnificent has been the victory the victory that i have achieved today is in proportion to the struggles i had to face was your confidence at this point of time shaken you see i am also a human being however strong i may seem this incident that is the loss of my foot did shake my confidence initially i saw myself as a disabled person who would never be able to run play volleyball or even walk i was completely shattered i questioned myself how would i face life now a middle class girl and that too a disabled how would life treat her all these questions plagued my mind but when the doctors assured me that i would soon be walking my confidence restored itself here i would like to give a message to our students at times you may feel that things are going wrong and you begin to lose confidence in yourself never be deterred because if you have a positive approach to life you will certainly achieve your goal uh whenever you are in a difficult situation you must remember that negative and positive situations are a part of your life take them in your stride then focus yourself upon a target work towards it wholeheartedly any target can be achieved with hard work determination and concentration ha, isn't it even in my case when i set my goal of climbing the everest people call me mad for this kind of goal you need not only physical fitness but also a huge sum of money almost 60 to 70 lakh rupees the question was from where but when i reflect back i find that from the time i was on the hospital bed and set a target everything fell into place the saying where there is a will there is a way seems so true you see my goal was my passion my life my dream my necessity any goal that is an outcome of these four things is always achieved for a person who has undergone so much trauma conquering the everest is a great achievement 
It is an achievement for an able-bodied person. But for someone who's special, it's a greater achievement. Would you please enlighten us as to how this thought of conquering the Everest came to your mind? Uh, this thought came to my mind almost one month after the unfortunate incident. One morning, I was reading the newspaper which mentioned three important routes to the Everest. Actually, there are 15 routes. 14 have been climbed through. The 15 is still left. Well, as I read, a question flashed through my mind. The Everest, can I climb it? I aired this thought to my family members. They thought that I was still in a state of shock. It was my brother-in-law who supported me and said, Haas, you can. And that was the beginning. Every day from that day onwards, my brother-in-law would fan the spark that soon became a fire. He even said that your courage, determination and willpower will certainly make it possible for you to achieve your goal. But again, there was a hitch. We did not know how to do it. We did not have the means nor the training to achieve this goal. People who heard about my goal felt that I was in a state of shock and hence had decided to take up an unachievable task. There are two types of people, one who compromise with situations and live their life and the other type who make their own path and walk upon it. And you chose to be the second type. Even our students must learn that they must never hesitate to make their own path and walk on it towards their goal. This is how my goal was decided. In fact, then my brother-in-law suggested that we must go to Madam Bachendri Pal and be under her guidance and training. I was in the hospital for four months. As soon as I was discharged from hospital, I headed for Jamshedpur to meet Madam Bachendri Pal. We reached Jamshedpur the next day and went to meet Madam Bachendri Pal. We had to climb a few steps to reach her office. I started climbing the steps while climbing the stitches on my leg and the part of my leg where the stump of the artificial leg was started bleeding. When I told her about my goal, tears welled up in her eyes and she said, even to think about conquering the Everest in this condition amounts to actually accomplishing the task. By me, you have already reached your goal. She then warned me about the difficulties I would face in this venture and even asked me if this goal was set in a rush of emotions. Finally, she was convinced that I was serious. She then told me to prove myself in the field and only then would she have confidence in me. After that, we returned to Lucknow. It was after 15 days that we reached Uttarakhand. At that time, the stitches of my wounds had not healed, but I braved it. We reached the Tata Steel Adventure Foundation, of which Madam Bachendri Pal is the chief. We reached the base camp a day earlier than that designated for us. Madam Bachendri Pal was very surprised at our arrival and sent someone to escort us to the base camp office. It was there that my struggles began. As we started going down from the road to the base camp, I found that I could hardly walk. The area where the stump of the artificial leg was started bleeding. I was in excruciating pain. The distance from the road to the base camp office was only a two minute walk. But for me, it became a two hour long journey. Finally, we reached the base camp office. At the base camp also, the reaction of the people was, why take this risk? Some even said she will be here till the tough training schedule drives her back. Everyone must have thought that your enthusiasm ah, yeah, exactly. would soon that die. That was the reaction. And you would again But I again. never gave up. I started my own training of climbing smaller heights within the camps, walking up to the river without any support and covering smaller distances independently. Tata Steel Adventure Foundation organizes an outdoor leadership and team building skills exercise while climbing a peak of 14,000 feet. I was also a part of the team, but initially my performance was very disappointing. I could never reach the peak. The entire team would be at the peak, but I was always behind them. Every time I could not complete the climb as time would get over and had to go back. You see, when you climb a mountain, there is a time you must adhere to. You must always reach the peak before 11 a.m. to 12 noon. To climb the mountain after that becomes dangerous. 
The thought that would trouble me was that my goal is to conquer Mount Everest. But here, I cannot even climb this small peak. This went on for a month. I was very disappointed with myself. Hence, I made a resolution. Because I think that the best motivator is your own self. I motivated myself and promised myself that come what may, I will conquer Mount Everest. But first, I had to conquer the smaller peak. After eight months, I was able to achieve my goal. I joined a team of mountaineers and picking up my bag, which was almost 35 kilograms in weight and strapping my artificial leg and walked with them. As soon as I got an opportunity, I picked up speed and marched ahead. I thought these people have come here for just a 10 day training and I have to conquer the Everest. This thought guided me to keep going. Finally, I reached the peak. I looked around and saw my team members still climbing. I had actually reached the summit half an hour before everyone. It was such a beautiful moment. This was my first achievement. It must have been a wonderful feeling of achievement, overcoming your disability and moving ahead of those who had once been ahead of you. But the best part was when the group members started praising me. They had seen me with my artificial leg struggling to walk and climb and now the conquest of this peak, it really surprised them. For me, the Everest was everything. You won't believe. But from the time I came to the base camp till the time I climbed the Everest, I did not go back home. I stayed in the base camp till I had made my conquest. There was no Sundays, no holidays for me. Conquering the Everest was like a mad dream. Madam Bachendri Pal was my mentor and guide. She would always say that I would certainly realize my dream. She called me her Sherni, a tigress. She would pat my back and encourage me. Each pat that she gave me was like magic and inspired me. She would say, I have seen people running away halfway through, but I am sure you will achieve your goal. Then we started learning and practicing all the techniques needed for conquering the Everest. We started jumaring. We tied ropes on trees and practiced. My entire training was at Tata Steel Adventure Foundation under Madam Bachendri Pal. When we used to practice the jumaring technique, we had to climb the steep mountainside. The sides were very steep and we had to plant our feet on it to climb up. At times my foot would really hurt. Actually, when you go up, the stress is on your legs and feet. Since I had an artificial leg, the area of my body where the stump is attached would really hurt. The pain at times was unbearable. I had to sit and relax for some time before proceeding to climb higher. Once Madam Bachendri Pal saw me resting and she said, I'm telling you Arunima, go back. You will never be able to do it. As soon as I heard this, I made 10 trips up and down to prove myself. Madam looked at me, laughed and said, I said it purposely to motivate you. It was this kind of atmosphere that I was exposed to during my training. Did you at any point of time feel that you had taken up something impossible? Uh, you see, there is a top called Dayara top and above that there is Tarua top. The slopes here are very steep as I have already mentioned. When you climb steep slopes, your feet and legs bear the maximum pressure. In this case too, the pressure was on my feet and I would keep stumbling. The area of my feet around the stump would hurt badly and bleed. At times the pain would be unbearable and I would sit down. When I think of it now, I realize that if you find something very difficult, you must find ways to involve yourself in it. The involvement must be so intense that it must lead to commitment. And you made sure that you always kept that pressure alive in your mind. Here I want to share the climbing experience I had in Europe. We were climbing the Elbrus, the highest peak in Europe. This peak is very steep. If you climb three steps, you fall back two so effectively. You move up one step only. With this pace, I finally conquered the Elbrus too. Arunima, you have conquered the Everest and three more peaks. What next now? If you want an honest answer, I will tell you that I did everything for myself. 
I wanted to get back the confidence that I had lost. Actually, mountaineering and adventure sports helped to build up your confidence. When I came back to India, after climbing the Elbrus, I found that the youth of India were associating themselves with me. Even those who could hardly walk said that they wanted to do something. They said, we have seen how you have been able to transform your disability to your best ability. Why can't we? Today's youth actually needs guidance. They do not know how to set goals and how to achieve them. Every day, they have innumerable targets and then every day, the desire to achieve these targets gets diluted. Yes, pressure we talked about earlier for the achievement of these targets is maybe not there. Yes, that's the reason. Hence, I decided that to keep the morale of the youth high, I would conquer the highest peak of each continent, the Everest of Asia, Kilimanjaro of Africa, Elbrus of Europe, Mount Josco of Australia are the four peaks I have already conquered. Three are still left. They are Mount Akongwa of South America, Mount McKinley of North America and Mount Vinson of Antarctica. Our good wishes are always with you. By conquering these peaks, I want to prove that physical disability can never be a hindrance in achieving your goals if you have the mental strength, strong willpower and firm determination. There were some who had climbed from the Tibet side. When I reached the top, I found climbers unfurling and putting up their flags. Seeing them do this, I also started putting up my tricolor. You know, by the time you climb the Everest, your energy is drained out. You are tired. I was almost falling due to fatigue, but my enthusiasm kept me going. I saw everyone trying to keep their flag the highest. Even I put my flag on a long stick to make it the highest. I just can't describe that moment. Tears welled in my eyes when I recall those precious moments. The wind was so strong, but I held on to my flag and kept it flying the highest. I was there for almost six to seven minutes. To tell you the truth, after coming back from the Everest, I have met almost three and a half lakh youth. And every time I narrate that precious moment to them, I experience it again. After reaching the top, I put up both my hands. In fact, I wanted to shout at the top of my voice that I have done it. I am on top of the world. I wanted to shout and scream to tell those people who think that women, disabled and the deprived, cannot do anything, that everything is possible and everyone can achieve everything. I also wanted to tell those who do not face failure positively that failure does not mean the end of life. I wanted to tell everyone that everything is possible. Then, I thanked everyone, especially those who had criticized me, for those were the ones who had actually motivated me. If they had not criticized me, I would never have been able to discover the qualities I had. Then, I had put up the Indian flag and asked the Sherpa to take a photograph. I do most of my work by planning each step carefully. I believe a task can be accomplished only with proper planning. You could, by chance, achieve something by being unplanned, but those cases are very rare. If you plan your endeavors, the chances of it being successful are 100%. In 2011, I met with the unfortunate accident and on 21st May 2013 at 10.55 a.m. I was on top of the world. How? According to the doctors at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, it takes three to four years for a person to walk with a prosthetic leg. But I had started walking in two days and in two years, I was on top of the world. This was possible only because I never walked with my feet. I achieved all this with my heart and my willpower. Actually, my mother and Madam Bachendri Pal have always told me that when you are in a situation where you are not able to decide what to do next, look back and see how you have reached the present destination, moving one step at a time. Then take your next step. You will soon reach your goal. Yes, pressure we talked about earlier for the achievement of these targets is maybe not there. Yes, that's the reason. Hence, I decided... I will certainly share some experiences with you when we were climbing the Everest from Camp 4, the distance being 3,500 feet. One side of this climbing area is known as Death Zone. 
Many people fall into this zone and lose their lives. We started our climb at about 5 p.m. We do most of the climbing at night because the weather is calm at night. As we climbed, night began to fall. The moonlight began to get reflected. It was shining everywhere. We put on our headlights and looked around us. The sight that we saw can never be forgotten. There were dead bodies lying all around. Such a sight is enough to break a person's confidence and will power. When you see a person who tried for the same goal as you are wanting to achieve, dead while trying to achieve it, believe me, the confidence in you gets really shaken and is sometimes enough for you to abandon your goal. There were some people in my group who went back after this incident. I stood there for a few minutes undecided as to what to do. But my goal was my passion and I decided to go ahead. I promised myself that I would climb the Everest for all those who had given up their lives for the Everest and return alive. I opened my safety carabiner and tied it to one of the bodies and moved ahead. I cannot tell you how I felt at that time, but uh, I had no other option. Another experience was when my prosthetic leg came off. At the Everest, the temperature is below minus 60 degrees. The skin becomes so stiff that it cracks. Fingers became like sticks. If you hit on any finger with something, there is danger of it dropping off. When we climb the mountain, we use our toes to climb, but when we descend, we use our heel to come down. We were very tired but happy and were coming down. Uh, it was dark, but the white snow was visible everywhere. It was then that my prosthetic leg came off. I was in a dilemma. If I strapped my prosthetic leg, I would get a frostbite and if I didn't, then I couldn't walk. However, we could not stop. I held the rope with one hand and my foot with the other and moved on. Finally, we reached a small shaded area, sheltered by a rock and I went in there to strap my foot. Actually, the stump bit into my leg and caused discomfort and pain. When I saw my foot, I found that it was bleeding. I used my glove to wipe the blood, strapped my foot and moved on. Actually, when my leg is strapped properly, I can even run. So we ran back to camp four. It was still dark. The tents were visible. I opened the zip of my tent and took off my oxygen cylinder and bag and put them down. At that moment, the leader of our group came out of his tent and said, Arunima, what was the need to risk your life like this? I just smiled and replied, the biggest risk is when you don't take any risk. The reason why he asked me this question was I had taken 28 hours to cover the distance from camp 4 to the summit and back. Usually people take only about 17 to 18 hours to cover this distance but I had taken 28 and for these 28 hours I had just one liter of water and two chocolates. The walkie talkie that we used to keep contact with camp 4 had also stopped working as there was no charge left in their batteries. Even my headlight had stopped working. Actually, everyone was following my climb as it was for the first time that a differently abled person had taken up this challenge. After 20 hours, everyone had given up and assumed that I would not return alive. You have been part of the Eco Everest expedition. Please elaborate why this expedition has been named so. Huh. This expedition has been named so because during this expedition we had to clean that area. Cleaning means we did not have to leave anything there. Pick up what we could and bring it back. We picked up flags, wrappers, rolls of cloth, cans and brought them back from camp one till the summit. There are lots of things like oxygen cylinders, flags, wrapper and cans lying. This is the garbage that is accumulating there. In fact, we were not even supposed to leave our human wastage there. We used a plastic packet for our human wastage, labeled it with our name and buried it in the snow. Coming back, we had to pick up our human wastage and carry it with us to be disposed of in the correct manner. I am also a brand ambassador for the Clean India campaign. Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Cleanliness is a must everywhere and must never be ignored. You have been termed a miracle. The spotlight is on you. 
how do you feel and how do you react to this what is a miracle when someone discovers their unique quality and moves one step ahead of the ordinary that person is termed as extraordinary or a miracle so it is up to you to decide whether you want to be a miracle that is extraordinary or just ordinary it is a fact that i feel elated when people call me a miracle i feel happy when i realize that the youth today has started associating themselves with me i'll just narrate an incident here there is an old couple who use the same bank for services as i do there was some problem with the gentleman's foot and he stopped walking on his own but when he heard about me and saw me he too has started walking on his own so this is a miracle yes this is a miracle this is what can be termed as a miracle positivity is something that can bring a change in someone's life too for the better i feel that even if a single gesture of mine can bring about a positive change in someone's life then i am a miracle who or what has been the inspiration behind your achievements my family that is my mother my brother my sister and my brother in law they were like an inspirational team for my everest journey mission then madam bachendri pal even today at the age of 64 the way she runs is amazing i have nicknamed her mountain goat then i must mention swami vivekanand whose philosophy has always inspired me these amazing people were my constant source of inspiration is your message to the young student generation of today today's youth is my generation hence i can identify with them today's youth i feel has no idea of their goals though they seem to be constantly wanting to achieve their goals and targets their goals are not clear to them they are running after too many things my sincere advice to them is select a goal one goal at a time and work towards it what inspired you to title your autobiography born again on the mountains this is the truth my life is a gift of the mountains if i had not climbed the mountains i would never have been known to the world it is the mountains that gave me a new life a life full of courage will power and confidence i am making an international sports academy for differently able children and would like my earnings to be used for the sports academy i have purchased almost 20 acres of land and would like the academy to match international standards i am working towards it there are almost 40 to 45 children enrolled here today they play football volleyball cricket and even receive training in mountaineering these children have already participated in the nationals that took place at ghaziabad this year this is a beautiful gesture i have a dream a dream of making many more arunimas so that no differently abled child is confined to his or her wheelchair or any other support for life we are very thankful to you arunima for sharing your most memorable moments with us and inspiring us to move ahead and make even the impossible possible